Hi, everybody. Uh, come on in, grab a seat. Uh, we're going to get started with our third session. Uh, this is going to be the second part of our CVIM saga this afternoon, um, deploying cloud-native apps with uh, the Cisco vers Virtual Infrastructure Manager. We're going to have to talk about a shorter product name. Uh, <laughs> um, but this will be presented by Abhishek and Nikolai. Um, I'm going to let them take it away so we give them all the time they need. Thanks, Gary. Uh, all right, so yes, this is uh, part two of our uh, CVIM talk, uh, but just Full disclosure, uh, this, is, uh, this is more of a use case of CVIM, and uh, all three of us who worked on this, uh, we're all in development, so this is more uh, coming at it from a developer point of view. Uh, and this was done as, as a proof of concept work, uh, so we will be taking some of this into our actual final product, but uh, we just wanted to share some, some of the findings of what we did and uh, what we took away from this, uh, from this experience. We thought it would be useful for the community to learn from it too. Um, so, with that, um, so this is the agenda that I have for today. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview of uh, what uh, PCRF is. It's, it's actually uh, the cloud native app that we try to deploy on CVIM. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of why they decided to go cloud native and how CVIM actually helped them out and so how it, it, it meshed well together. Uh, so, in that regard, uh, they wanted to deploy it on bare metal. So, CVIM, uh, as Chandra had mentioned, uh, was running mainly VMs un until this point. So, we now have uh, bare metal support via Ironic. Uh, so, I'll give you an overview of that. Uh, and then, just a quick overview of how uh, we deployed Kubernetes. CCP support for it is still not there. Uh, that is in the works uh, or in the planning stage anyway. So while that was being done, again, this was a proof of concept level work, so we manually deployed Kubernetes, but we'll just quickly give you an overview of how we did that uh, and then deployed the actual app. So, um, uh, so PCRF, that is the Cisco policy and charging rules function. It's part of uh, Cisco's uh, policy suite uh, for, uh, for the mobile industry, essentially. Uh, they provide uh, policy charging subscriber data management. Uh, it's, it's a solution that is uh, virtualized uh, and it works um, uh, in conjunction with policy enforcement in the network. Uh, it's um, to provide real-time management of your subscribers, your applications, your network resources, all running on service provider environments, whether it be in 3G, in 4G, or in 5G. Uh, PCRF itself is, is a 4G application, uh, but they're using, again, this finding to um, deploy for all their 5G solutions, too. So this uh, PCRF is, is another team within Cisco. I, I represent the CVIM team. Uh, today, though, I'll be representing both the PCRF and the CVIM team. Uh, they are, Tarun, unfortunately, is not uh, able to be here. Uh, so the main reason they decided to go cloud native was they wanted to be um, uh, a stateless app uh, instead of the, their current uh, monolithic state. Uh, they wanted to be, uh, you know, a standalone uh, app that can be uh, um, loosely coupled um, and in managed individually. Uh, they wanted to be uh, stateless in, you know, in, form, in terms of both the application and the database that they had. Uh, and the main reason they decided to deploy on bare metal was it's mainly a control plane app, so they wanted to try and uh, take advantage, uh, full advantage of running directly on bare metal. Uh, having said that, they have run on VMs too, and again, th this is also, even on their side, this is still a proof of concept level work, so they're comparing performance both on VMs and on bare metal. Uh, for, for our case, we decided to start out with bare metal since we wanted to bring in bare metal to see them uh, anyway. Uh, uh, what were their requirements uh, in addition, uh, apart from you know, the cloud infrastructure and uh, bare metal? Uh, it was pretty simple. Uh, they, all, the instances that they were deploying, they needed just one uh, external routable interface uh, so that they could SSH to it and then uh, all the different instances could talk to each other through that same interface. And uh, they also needed uh, shared storage uh, between the instances. Uh, this was easy. This is easy to do uh, when you have VMs. You can just use Cinder. Uh, but uh, in Ironic, the community itself doesn't have a, uh, um, such a solution for shared storage. So we'll just quickly tell you how we we try to solve that. And again, it's it's something that we're we're looking at more 
uh, solutions also when we go to a product state. Uh, uh, Ajay will come on stage and will give you uh, an overview of what are, what are the different things that we're considering. So how did CVM with Ironic meet uh, all these needs? Um, so this is the, um, the actual architecture. You, you, uh, based on the previous talk, you probably can figure out everything on the left side was the existing way in which uh, CVM is. Uh, there's a management node, there's, there are controller nodes, there are storage nodes, dedicated compute nodes. Uh, for Ironic, well, now what we have are additional bare metal nodes uh, that are used as uh, Ironic computes. Uh, they're, they're, um, uh, as you can see, right, we, we, we only configure one single interface on each one of those, and so they go through uh, the same top of rack switch. Um, and uh, Ironic will take care of dynamically configuring that switch uh, and with the other additional OpenStack services, deploy these bare metal nodes as, as your instances. Um, so again, coming back to our CVM architecture, uh, this is how we, we have a, uh, control nodes where we have all our different OpenStack services running. Uh, for Ironic, what we did was, of course, add in the Ironic uh, services. They're essentially Ironic Conductor, Ironic Pixie, Ironic API. Uh, Ironic also needs uh, a compute agent uh, where the driver is an Ironic driver instead of a libboard driver. Uh, so we had to bring in Nova Compute, which we normally had running only in our CVM compute nodes. We, we are now deploying compute also in the controller node. Uh, the main reason for doing this was we did not want to uh, use up one compute node uh, as, as an ironic driver, in which case, you know, that entire server is lost and you're not doing anything on that server. So we repurpose our control node itself to have just a Nova compute agent running. Uh, that way, all our compute nodes are still available for VMs, so that way you can have a dynamic, uh, you know, hybrid of VMs and ironic bare metal servers running if you wanted to. Um, so as part of CVIM, uh, uh, with ironic, these three things happen. Um, the placement of the ironic services that I just mentioned, um, when you actually want to deploy the bare metal, what happens is Ironic will program the tar that I just showed you in the previous picture. Uh, it'll go to the in actual interface of the bare metal uh, on the tar that the bare metal is connected to. It'll program the VLAN that, uh, that you're going to uh, assign that, uh, that, that bare metal will get assigned to. Uh, so um, Ironic makes use of uh, Neutron to do this. Uh, I'll, I'll go over the details of how Ironic uses this feature called multi-tenancy. Uh, with Neutron to actually get that happen, uh, to make that possible. Uh, and finally, uh, again, through this multi-tenancy feature, uh, we switch from uh, using the management network for the actual provisioning to the tenant network because at the end of the day, when you provision your bare metal, you finally want it running on your tenant network. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so this, is, this is what I touched upon. Um, uh, the way Ironic works, um, it's um, you have this multi-tenancy feature turned on so that um, the, the initial uh, provision, uh, the, uh, the, the finding out of the bare metal uh, properties and such uh, takes place on an Ironic management network. Um, you can have a dedicated bare metal network to do this. Uh, we didn't want to create a separate network. What we instead did was we repurposed our Mercury management network itself. We create a small pool within that Mercury management network uh, that is dedicated only for Ironic. Uh, we use DHCP that one of those uh, IPs from that pool is taken and temporarily assigned to the uh, bare metal node. Uh, and then that is used for the actual uh, Ironic cleaning. If you've probably seen the Ironic config, uh, you know that you need to have uh, a cleaning network and a provisioning network. So the Mercury management network take, uh, plays that role. Um, and uh, the way we then switch over to the tenant network is through the, uh, the, the configuration that we've shown here. Uh, this is, again, a feature that's available in the Ironic community. Uh, so you enable it through your Ironic config file. Um, now, at this point, Ironic makes use of Neutron, and so with Neutron, you need to have a mechanism driver to actually communicate and program the TAR. Uh, so the mechanism driver we chose was to go with the uh, generic switch driver. Uh, the generic switch driver actually doesn't have support for six, uh, Cisco and Nexus OS. So uh, Nikolai was the one who actually added in the support for uh, Nexus OS pl uh, plugin uh, 
uh, code for, for the generic driver. Uh, and so that essentially is, is enabled through, uh, again, if you're familiar with Neutron config files, uh, the ML2 config file. Uh, so as you can see that uh, we have the generic switch mechanism driver added in there, and then you'll have a generic switch uh, section within that same config file which has the details of the switch, the login credentials, and the IP. So what CVIM does is it automates all of this for you so, so that you don't have to manually do it. Uh, when you run our Cisco VIM installer, uh, automatically these details are gathered and slapped into config files. So at the end of the install, all of this is already there for you, and you're, you're good to go. Um, this gives you uh, a high-level uh, network topology. Uh, again, uh, that is the, gen the overall CVM architecture we have, the controllers, compute, storage, and the management node. Uh, if you look for you know, CVM documentation online, you'll, you'll see this, and all the existing networks are as is. What, what's new that we did for Ironic was, as you can see, you have a, you know, a bare metal there. Uh, again, just the one single interface going to your Tor. Uh, and as you can see, we didn't create any new network segment as such, but what we're essentially doing is we initially use the Mercury management network, uh, and then we switch over to, to the 10 network once the instance is actually uh, deployed. Um, on the control plane side of things, as I mentioned, um, for, so at the, when you're trying to, um, launch the bare metal instance, it is still at the end of a, uh, the day a Nova instance that you're booting up. Uh, so Nova needs to know how it is uh, a bare metal driver, whether it's provisioning a bare metal driver, a bare metal instance or a virtual instance. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, we have Nova compute agent running. Uh, and so uh, the compute agent um, has, in this case, uh, the ironic driver and so the libboard driver. Uh, this again is automated uh, when you enable uh, you can run CVIM with or without Ironic. When you run it with Ironic, automatically we will deploy the compute agent in the controller nodes, and the config, Nova config file will have uh, Ironic driver uh, enabled in there. So um, the actual workflow, uh, as I've mentioned this, uh, our OpenStack services runs. We create the Ironic management network, which takes care of the provisioning. Uh, the, the next step, uh, creation of Ironic nodes and Ironic ports. So for this POC level, uh, we'd ha we didn't get around to finishing automation of that, uh, but we are working on automating that in the next release. So what you do is you essentially use OpenStack CLI. You, uh, it's, it's again, uh, you know, OpenStack CLI that's, that's available for uh, you for any Ironic users that know how to use it. You create the actual node, you provision it, you use, uh, Ironic is a two-stage uh, uh, you know, install process where you first run uh, a deploy image. Uh, we used uh, tiny core image as our deploy image. Uh, so um, you deploy it so that the node then becomes manageable. Uh, at that, uh, you also have to create the Ironic port so that Ironic can, uh, of course, provision that, uh, that bare metal. Uh, and then once the uh, node is actually becomes available, at that point it's ready for you to, you know, create a tenant network and then launch launch an instance. Um, so those those things are uh, a bunch of manual steps that that we had to do. Uh, but as I mentioned, we are going to be uh, automating all of that. Uh, and this final slide on CVM with Ironic, I just want to show, uh, tell you know, so this, this is similar to the same slide that uh, Ajay presented. Uh, so we still have all the same uh, CVM features where uh, you can do an online or an offline install. Um, you can um, uh, download the images. Uh, Ironic images will come with this, with the, the tiny core image, deploy images that we use. Uh, we also have Ubuntu and CentOS as the user image. Uh, for PCRF, they specifically wanted uh, Ubuntu Xenil images. So we, uh, we built Ironic Ubuntu Xenil images that uh, we then uh, uh, actually deploy on the bare metals. Uh, also, it comes with uh, update, rollback support, uh, upgrade support. Um, so once um, you have Ironic up and running, once you've actually created your tenant network, uh, you launch the actual uh, instance. So the way PCRF uh, wanted to do it, um, uh, so this, this gives you the architecture of what it is that they wanted. 
so um, again, this is proof of concept work. So they did it uh, on the CVIM uh, micropod, uh, which is essentially a, a multi uh, control compute storage all in one node. Uh, so in that node, uh, we have one VM that we create that is going to be your master. Uh, and we've provisioned two bare metal nodes, as I mentioned, running Ubuntu. Uh, and those are going to be your uh, workers. So in addition to manually deploying the actual uh, Ironic um, nodes with Ubuntu, uh, we then went about deploying Kubernetes uh, manually. Uh, um, so uh, it's, it's a custom script that the PCRF team has already written that uh, does uh, Kubernetes install. Um, they also, as I mentioned, needed shared storage. Uh, so there is. Uh, Rook that's available. Uh, we used Rook as has been um, uh, suggested in the in the community. Uh, we used Rook with Ceph. Uh, we didn't do anything uh, new there. We just used the uh, uh, custom configurations that that was uh, already uh, mentioned in the website, and uh, we um, we had Rook with Ceph running, and that that actually worked fine in this proof of concept level. But we had, uh, we had uh, co contemplating other solutions for actual production. Uh, once this was done, uh, then we had a final script, which again is, is the actual PCRF script. Again, I can't share that script because it's, it's uh, Cisco, Cisco's uh, scripts. But uh, at that point, this infrastructure essentially uh, was available for their cloud native app to be deployed. Uh, it, it's a two-stage deployment that they have, one where they deploy a platform and then the actual uh, PCRF uh, GUI that runs on top of it to get all your um, uh, mobility data on that. So um, that that was uh, that was it for the actual infrastructure side of things for making sure that uh, you can have cloud native uh, you know Kubernetes on uh, CVIM on OpenStack. That that was the infrastructure and that that's what was uh, available. So as part of this, we, we figured out, as I said, uh, Rook was the only storage solution that we could come up with. But we wanted something that was more production grade. So we are actually still discussing that. There are a couple more things also that we took away, which I'll share in the actual uh, summary that when, when we get to it. But I'll let Ajay talk on the uh, different uh, things we're evaluating right now. Thanks, Abhi. So um, what you saw, if you, if you remember the in the previous presentation, what uh, you looked at uh, Cisco Container Platform. And what that enabled you to do was you had a single cloud which could basically host virtual machine workloads and container workloads. But what we also showed is that the Kubernetes uh, containers were all running on virtual machines, right? They were not running on bare metal. So this is the next step, right? What do we want to do right now is since that you have Cisco Vim now being able to deploy bare metal nodes. The next logical step is to allow Kubernetes clusters to be deployed on those bare metal nodes. But this throws in a little bit of um, options our way, right? There are lots of things that come into consideration at this point. So if you look at this slide, um, Nilima actually presented a demo in the last presentation of how uh, we deployed the CCP control plane on OpenStack. And it deployed one to n Kubernetes clusters on Cisco Vim. OpenStack Cloud. We will continue to run the CCP control plane in virtual machines because that's just a control plane application. It doesn't need bare metal hosts. We will also run the Kubernetes. Now you can basically run the Kubernetes control plane. You, when you deploy a Kubernetes cluster, you can run the master on virtual machines and you can run workers on bare metal. So we will basically use CCP to kind of deploy a Kubernetes cluster with the Kubernetes masters on virtual machines and the workers on bare metal. Now when the workers are on bare metal, you have important considerations as to what are you going to use as storage when you have a bare metal, a bare metal Kubernetes cluster, right? So we are evaluating a couple of options for that. I think it's not showing up there. Yeah. So one of the things that um, when you deploy a Kubernetes cluster on bare metal, what you need to do is you need to evaluate 
what dedicated storage you're going to, going to basically provide for that Kubernetes cluster. Now, when you need to evaluate, Kubernetes, as you know, provides different kinds of dedicated uh, storage support. So we, we are planning to evaluate Portworx, ClusterFS, OpenEBS, and uh, Abhishek already talked about Rook, right? So we will evaluate these for various conditions. One of the things that um, we look at is read-write once versus read-write many. So can you have multiple um, applications writing at the same time? The other is the HA constraints, right? Suppose one node goes down, can the volume be detached and migrated to another node? So each of these storage solutions pro perform very differently depending on these criteria. So that's the evaluation that we will be going through. So one option is a dedicated storage per tenant cluster. So every tenant cluster that CCP deploys will come built in with its persistent storage. So then CCP uh, manages the cluster storage along with the Kubernetes cluster. So both as one, uh, this thing. The other option is there were talks today which talked about uh, using Manila as uh, shared storage for different Kubernetes cluster. So you have two options. Either each Kubernetes cluster that CCP deploys basically deploys its own persistent storage, or you have you use OpenStack's file system service, and these Kubernetes clusters can then talk to that. So these are the two options that we are going to evaluate in our roadmap from the perspective of various constraints like read write once, read write many, and HA constraints. Things like how do things per persistent volumes get detached and moved around during HA failures? So once we do that, um, that's what we will evaluate, and then we will, uh, CCP will then be able to support bare metal workloads. So then you'll have a single Cisco Vim cloud today which supports virtual machines and container workloads on virtual machines to then expand to container workloads on bare metal. So with that, um, I'll hand it back to Abhishek to conclude. Thanks, Jay. So, um, yeah, so in, in summary, so this is essentially just want to Again, as I mentioned, share our, our findings and our experience with this. So we managed to, um, you know, deploy uh, CVIM with Ironic, uh, make the OpenStack infrastructure available uh, with, uh, you know, e external network which uh, on, on the bare metal instances which CVIM does for you. Uh, on top of that, we were able to successfully deploy uh, Ubuntu, albeit manually. Uh, that will also be automated hopefully in the future. Uh, and uh, we had our master running as a VM, and the ironic nodes were our actual workers. Uh, we did run into issues with storage, as I mentioned, but we solved it for now with Rook. Um, we also feel that uh, the ironic uh, manual steps itself can be actually automated with uh, Inspector, so we're actually working on adding, bringing in ironic Inspector support so that uh, that part of ironic is also uh, automated. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's essentially how we managed to deploy a cloud native app on our uh, CVM infrastructure.